from Earth uh, to Mars. It's got the thrusters on there, the sensors on there that help us make sure that we can uh, find a way to, to get to Mars uh, in the right manner. The thing that's not here today is the uh, just the <laughs> little ice shanty, a little tip up. We're trying to find pa uh, past signs of life, and we don't want to bring, we don't want to find something we bring, obviously. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're not bringing bacteria and stuff that could survive the flight to Mars and thrive in that atmosphere. Um, we, we don't want to find that. Also, just uh, in terms of putting things together, uh, we have found that small, small particles could cause big problems. So you want to make sure that you have as, as, as little contamination as possible as we're putting everything together. So what we do in this room is we make sure we have a strict clean room protocol so that we are not sending, not contaminating our vehicles so that we can preserve the science um, that we are interested in, in learning about. Engines are designed to use that, and they, they deep it. Ten minute delay. Um, also, if anybody wants to do interviews later today, at our sign outside. Here we can see evidence of the former lake. The canyon cutting through the crater rim was carved by a river. As the water entered the lake, it slowed and dropped the sand and mud it was carrying to form the fan-shaped delta. The white line is a path the rover might follow in its first two years, called the Prime Mission. We're just taking a very small sample up into orbit, but it's, uh, it, it would, we potentially could get it on a rover about the size of that vehicle on the top deck. The trick, though, is that we're looking for trace levels of chemicals from billions of years ago on Mars. These are really, this is a signal that's way down in what we call the noise floor, and to find those parts per billion type of chemical signatures, uh, we believe we have to collect those samples and prepare them for return back to the Earth and really apply the full capability of terrestrial um, laboratories and uh, universities and scientists uh, to, to understand what we're looking at. Yeah. carrying about 40 tubes on the vehicle. We're going to collect 20 to 30 probably for return. Once we have a sufficient set, we'll put them down on the ground. And another mission, which we hope to launch in 2026, will come land on the surface, collect those samples, and put them into a rocket, basically. It's called a Mars Ascent Vehicle. That rocket launches those samples into orbit around Mars. It rendezvous with an orbiter and then the orbiter brings them back to the Earth and eventually they uh, enter the, the Mars, uh, Earth atmosphere in an entry capsule and we collect them. carrying technology experiments that will help us prepare for human exploration. We're going to make oxygen on the surface of Mars. We're carrying a small helicopter drone, which will give us an aerial reconnaissance capability. When we land at Jezero, we're going to use a new landing capability that gives us a hazard avoidance um, function that allows us to land safely, which future missions, human missions, uh, can can also take advantage of. These are all feed-forward technologies into human exploration, and I think uh, our robotic explorers serve that purpose in a very real way. We had curiosity, and now we have our Uh, 
so we're very mature at this point. We've already got the entry capsule shipped down to Kennedy Space Center, and you're looking at the three flight vehicles uh, that are left that are part of the spacecraft. Uh, we're, we're just about to ship these down to Kennedy in the second week of February. Then we'll reassemble the whole thing, integrate ultimately with the upper stage of the launch vehicle, get out to the pad and, and get the rocket lit.